Today on Arkham Audio, we're going to talk about RPG resources. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a great mind mapping resource called Miraboard. This is an amazing tool for investigative games such as Call of Cthulhu and works well for both keepers and players. For players, it's an excellent way to keep track of handouts, clues, places visited, and take collaborative notes. For keepers, it's a great resource to be able to keep track of NPC chases, items, locations, as well as outlines for the adventure module. So let's go over some of the features and how to set up this amazing tool. Let's start off by taking a look at a mock-up board for a made-up scenario called the Case of the Random Object. This is the board that we're going to be recreating for this guide. So let's tune in and find out just what has happened in the Case of the Random Object. Madam Blackstone has received an urgent telegram from a man named Mr. McGuffin, asking her to meet him at a creepy old house. Upon her arrival, he informs her that he believes an ancient tome has fallen into the hands of a vile cult leader known only as Villain McBillinface. He suggests that she looks for clues at the obligatory library in town. Madam Blackstone then travels to the library and after some time and extensive use of her exemplary research skills, she finds a newspaper clipping that mentions a bookstore by the name of Treadwell's Bookstore. Upon further research of the county deeds, she finds the proprietor to be listed as a Mr. McVillain face. She travels to the bookstore and discovers that it is the base of operations for McVillain face's cult. She is attacked by a cultist, but manages to defeat him and find the ancient tome and returns it to Mr. McGuffin, and the world is safe once more. This is what the scenario you just heard might look like mapped out in Miro, with information on characters, locations, handouts, and NPCs. Let's go ahead and take a look at the functionality of each of these pieces. We'll start off with the telegram handout. In the upper left, I have placed a comment bubble. Here, players can comment and take notes and collaborate with each other. These comment bubbles can even be color-coded to hold different information, and multiple bubbles may be added to each item. In the upper left-hand side, there is a folder icon with an arrow. If clicked, this arrow will take you to the handout frame, where you can see all of the handouts and navigate back to the board to review them. Frames are a great way to organize sets of information and to set up quick link navigations. You will notice that each handout has a magnifying glass, with an arrow in the upper right hand side of the icon. When pressed it will take you to the handout where you can review it. Moving to the Madame Blackstone token and card, you have access to all the information about this character. If you mouse over the card that is directly to the right of the token, a gray circle with two diagonal arrows will appear. When this is clicked it will open up the card. I like to store the character's backstory here as well as a link to the character sheet and maybe even their top skills. From there, let's move down to the Creepy House location where Madame Blackstone meets Mr. McGuffin. On the Mr. McGuffin token, you will notice that there is a blue Google Docs icon. When this icon is clicked, it will open up a Google Doc on the NPC where players can collaborate. This can also be done with a card if you prefer that. This just demonstrates the ability to link outside sources such as Google Docs, Wiki pages, or even audio files. Over on the right hand side, we have an image that says Resources. When the arrow is clicked here, it'll take you to the resource frame. In this frame, you can see PDF integration as well as an embedded YouTube video and a link to be able to create characters. Mero not only has great collaborative features inside of the board, but it allows you to set up quick and easy access to outside information as well. Those are pretty much the basic features that I have found useful for a solid investigation mind map. There are tons more features that Miro has to offer, and I encourage you to play around and try different things. I hope that you have found this overview of Miro Board useful. If you would like to see a full tutorial on how to create and set up your own Miro Board, drop a comment below. And if you're enjoying our content on this channel, please take a moment to like and subscribe. And don't forget to tune in next time for more on Arkham Audio.